Hey, I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to the Water Cooler. We're here with Dr. Monticelli with the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute. He's a medical oncologist. So basically what that means for our viewers is if someone has prostate cancer and they've been treated and then PSA starts to go back up, you would be one of the people they would come visit. Yeah, that's correct. When the PSA starts rising after you've had definitive therapy, that means surgery or radiation, typically that means that you've got cancer cells somewhere making that PSA. And the good news would be that you might not have to do something right away. If the PSA is rising slowly and we track that over time, then for those patients, and that's a lot of them, you just continue watchful waiting. A lot of the treatments have some side effects that men want to avoid. So ideally, if the PSA is moving slowly, again, we just sit, sit back and watch that and keep an eye on things and periodically do some scans. If on the other hand, the PSA is rising rapidly or the cancer has spread into the bone or somewhere else, the good news in that situation is we've got a ton of options now to treat those patients. And that's a scary thing for a guy, you know, I had cancer and that's uh, prostate cancer and it's a scary thing to think, okay, the numbers are going back up and what I love just from talking with you prior to this interview is to understand that there's a lot of options out there for people. Right, right, there are. The first one typically would be to go on a drug called Lupron and there's some other uh, drugs similar to Lupron. And for a lot of patients, we don't have to leave them on Lupron continuously. We can use what's called intermittent Lupron, and that'll control the PSA for a long period of time. It's really a small percentage of patients that have to go on Lupron and stay on it continuously. Once we go through the Lupron, uh, if that stops working, then there's a number of options that come after that. Those include some old drugs that we had talked about and some newer ones that look extremely promising. And the nice thing about the newer drugs is that typically they work better and they have fewer side effects. And by the time someone gets to chemotherapy, um, that's when the other treatments have, are not working or their cancer, you, you actually find something metastasized. Right, so when people get to chemotherapy, that's really, uh, really a late stage event. So I do see a small number of patients that when they come in, it's already spread into the bone. And even in those patients, we'll try the hormonal maneuvers first because sometimes you'll get control for several years with that. But if that fails uh, and it's in the bones, then that's when we move on to things like chemotherapy, drugs like Provenge, or clinical trials, because there's a lot of new agents in the pipeline that look very promising. That's really the hope at the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute is you're providing hope because it's not just one answer or two answers. You've got a whole range of options here that people can look at so they don't have to panic. You know? That's right. And the best thing to do is get some information but with regards to not panicking, I, I think the good thing there is that, as we see in other cancers, there's a, a huge number of new drugs that are getting ready to come online. Uh, the understanding of cancer is so much more involved than it was just ten, five or 10 years ago. And the newer treatments are getting more to the specific abnormalities of the cancer, as opposed to broadly toxic treatments like chemotherapy. And I guess the advice that I would give, and the advice I give all my patients is get information, uh, get some second opinions, uh, and really ask a lot of questions. All right, I wanna talk more about this, but this is it for the water cooler. You can go to the website on your screen to get more of this interview, because um, I'm, I'm interested in this. We're gonna continue this conversation, so we'll be back. Oh.